Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the McLaren series for Sinex. Okay, so first of all, differentiate it. So Sinex goes to cosine x. Second derivative is minus sine x. And third derivative is minus cosine x. Okay, now we need to evaluate each of these when x is zero. So f of zero is sine of zero, which is zero. Now, when you do, uh, evaluate the first derivative, zero, cosine of zero is one, okay? And then the second derivative, evaluated at zero, will be minus sine of zero, which is still zero. And the third derivative, evaluated at zero, will be minus one, okay? Now, what this is actually telling you is that two of the terms are going to be zero immediately. So currently we've only got two terms, non-zero terms, in our expansion. So we might need to go a little bit further. Okay, so let's go to the fourth and fifth derivative, okay, and see what we're dealing with. So minus cosine x differentiates back to sine x, and the fifth derivative will go back to cosine x. So the fourth derivative evaluated at zero is just going to be zero, and the fifth term evaluated at zero is going to be equal to one. Okay, so uh, sine x is going to be equal to, so we've got f of zero, which is just zero, f prime of zero times x, so one lot of x. f double prime of zero is zero, f triple prime of zero is minus one. So we have minus one over three factorial x cubed. Then the fourth derivative is zero, so the next term will be zero. The fifth term is one, so we'll have plus one over five factorial x to the five. The next one will be zero, then we would have a negative one over seven factorial x to the seven, etc. Now as for the general term, Okay, uh, let's see what we can see, um, what, we, what patterns we can see. Because we've got uh, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we know each time we're changing sign. So we can have minus 1 to the power of something to allow for that. Now, as for the power of that at the moment, let's just leave that for one moment. Let's, um, or let's find the other bits first. Okay, so... We've got this fraction here, so 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over 5 factorial, 1 over 7 factorial, that's 1 over 1 factorial, okay? But we only want the odd numbers to appear, so even numbers can be represented with 2 times r, that will always give you an even value. 2r plus 1 will give you an odd value, okay? So we're going to want uh, 1 over 2r plus 1 factorial, we want that number to be the same number that's in the power of x, so that's going to be x. I could write it as 1, then x there, if I like, well, if that's going to help. Okay, if I just write it there for the moment. You can write the x to the 2r plus 1 in the power there, if you prefer. Now, we've still got to come back and deal with the power that's going in for that minus 1. So, when r is zero, okay, if r is zero, you're going to end up with one over one factorial times x to the one, right? But we want this to be positive. So if r is zero at that point, then minus one to the power of zero will give me one. And that will give me that term there. Now let's try it. So when r is, um, r is one, Okay, I'm going to get minus 1 to the power of 1, which is the minus sign, 1 over 3 factorial, x to the 3. So when r is 2, I'm going to get minus 1 squared, which is positive 1, over 1 times 1 over 5 factorial, x to the 5. And so as the r value is increasing from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's giving me my terms in my sequence. So this is what I wanted, okay? Now, as for what values it is valid for, 
sine x is valued for all real values. Okay, so if you want to say for all, then the upside down a can be included here if you like. 